Hello, and today we're doing predictions for match day number 30 of the EFL Championship 2020-21 to season. Last week we scored ourselves 23 points. Not too bad at all. We got a correct score in there in the game between Reading and Brentford. Uh, that was 3-1, of course. And we got some correct results in the Luton win over Birmingham, the Norwich win over Stoke, and also the wins for Derby and for Watford. You owns! What a win that was. Uh, and uh, we also got a correct uh, result in the Sheffield Wednesday win in midweek against Wickham. But talking of midweek, there's more midweek games in the Championship. And this time around, what is the theme of the week? It is Pancake Day. That's right. Let's do this. And the song of the week for this week is a tough one because by my knowledge, I'm not sure of any pancake themed related songs, um, but we're just going to go for it. So it's going to be called, all right, just hear me out with this one. It's called Pancake by Jaded. And I've got to be honest, I've never heard this song. So we're just going to put it in the description. Give it a little listen whilst you watch these championship midweek games. And uh, yeah, it will be a good one. So the colour of the week is going to be purple for this week. And we're just going to get straight into the game. So to kick us off this game week, we have Stoke City up against Sheffield Wednesday. Now, this is an interesting one because Stoke come into this off the back of a very, I mean... On the one hand, you could say that they should be, you know, they should be higher in the table. But ultimately, they didn't actually have a game. Um, <laughs> so there's not a lot they can do about that. Um, or did they? No, I think they did. They've played 20, 29 matches, but it's not coming up with um, a Stoke game. I don't really know, to be honest. Um, I'm a little bit confused. Where even is? Oh, there it is. Yeah, 4-1. Uh, it was 4-1. Uh, it just didn't come up for a second. But they lost to Norwich in a bad way. So they need to respond from that. And their opponents this week uh, that are, of course, Sheffield Wednesday, well, they also lost. Um, and actually, did they even play? No, they didn't play. Of course they didn't. Against Swansea. So they didn't lose. They just didn't play because uh, of a frozen pitch, of course. Um, so you could argue Sheffield Wednesday are in better uh, condition for this game. And I think that will actually help get them the win. It'll be a tight one, but I'll say Stoke City 1, Sheffield Wednesday 2. All right. By the way, we're going to look back at my fantasy team uh, for this week and talk through all of that. Um, in week 29, I scored myself 41 points in the gaffer.io championship fantasy. Um, not exactly ideal. It's another red arrow, but... We've made some changes. We've made a minus four hit. Hopefully it pays off and we'll talk about that at the end. But the next game to predict is Preston against Watford. Come on, you horns. Massive game. Um, whilst, you know, in the Tuesday games, the Champions League is back. Uh, and that will be coming at 10 o'clock tomorrow. So get ready for that. But also, one thing to remember is the Championship. In this season, we are exactly, you know... Well, I should say halfway. We're not really. We're more than halfway uh, through the season um, because obviously 23 would have been halfway. But the point is, uh, and what I'm getting to is that it's a big, big season for Watford. We need to bounce back. We need to get back to the Premier League, and we got an absolutely brilliant game uh, against Bristol City. What a win! But with Watford, it's always a problem of consistency. Can we keep it consistent? And I hope we can. But you know, with Watford, you've always got that sinking feeling. And maybe that's just, you know, me coming to know Watford over the years. But if we can not necessarily get a 6-0, because that was probably a, a very special occasion where Bristol City were really struggling. But ultimately, what we want as Watford fans is a win. Um, so I'm going to predict that. I've got to be optimistic. But I'm going to go with Preston North End 0, Watford 1. In the reverse fixture, we absolutely destroyed uh, the Preston team 4-1. But I don't think it will be that easy this time. You know, Deepdale is a tough place to go, but we need to get some momentum and get some winning runs. 
So I'll say 1-0 to the Golden Boys. Of course, we do it late and uh, we, we make it nervy. And that goal is scored by the Brazilian that's absolutely coming come into his own this season uh, as a new player in terms of for a whole first season and uh, a young player who's really, you know, ripping up the, the goal scoring charts. It is Joao Pedro and I think he will get the winner on 84 minutes. He, of course, scored in the reverse fixture also. And now we've got a game that is going to be between, first of all, Middlesbrough and then Huddersfield. Now, what do I think about this? Well, Huddersfield, they got actually quite a frustrating result last week against Wickham. That was a game that I think a few Huddersfield fans would have expected to win. Um, but fair play to Wickham. You know, they had the comeback of dreams thanks to another Jakobsen penalty. And, of course, Josh Knight. What a moment for him. Um, the Leicester Loney getting a, a late, late goal. Uh, the absolute scenes. But Huddersfield really shouldn't have um, given it away like that. You know, they were in pretty much cruise control. Um, and uh, Pippa uh, got the assist for the, for the I think it was the the second goal for Mbenza or... It basically it was it was easy easy going and uh, then they get that goal at half time Wickham and suddenly it's a completely different matchup so yeah uh, they need to really bounce back to Huddersfield um, but this week they are up against Middlesbrough um, and it's at the Riverside this is quite a tough game just because we know how Neil Warnock's team sets up defensively they're gonna frustrate you they're gonna try and get a goal on the break and. To be fair, Middlesbrough haven't been scoring uh, many goals this season. Um, they did get one uh, against uh, Derby through Naskins Cabano, the new signing. But I just feel Middlesbrough are really struggling to get that many goals. So I think they will struggle to score in this one and consequently struggle to win. So Middlesbrough nil, Huddersfield Town 2 is what I'm going to go with. It might be bold, it might be brave, but that's what I think will happen. All right, now we've got a game that is between Bristol City and Reading. Um, so that's an interesting one. Now, Bristol City, how do they pick themselves up from that absolute mauling? They really have to just do it with something here. But they're playing Reading, who have been an amazing team this season. They did get slapped up a fair bit by Brentford in midweek. And also, Reading, they can't be losing games like that to Millwall. So, you know, Reading aren't going to be exactly high-flying either, but... They're still the better team, so you'd fancy Reading to get three points here. Um, and I think it'll be a narrow uh, margin of victory. But once again, Reading do what is required to get the three points. So I'll say Bristol City two, uh, Reading three. Could be a good one, um, in my opinion. So we move on to now the game between Wickham Wanderers and Derby County. Now, Derby, fair play to them. You know, they've improved their form uh, as of late. Uh, under Wayne Rooney uh, through the full-time management and it was a massive win uh, it was a bit of a six pointer against Middlesbrough and uh, they just need to keep on doing that and fair play that goal from Kazim Richards was absolutely brilliant um, so uh, he's going to be a danger man in this game but in terms of Wickham what they did in the last game you have to just commend them whether they will stay up is still very very tough to call and they're still a team punching above their weight. And they've done so well to get into the championship. Um, but at home, it's been where they've actually been quite a, a tough team um, for some of the other clubs to face. So Derby won't find this easy. And therefore, I think Wickham will grind out a draw. And it will end Wickham Wanderers 1, Derby County 1. Uh, just like the score was when we went to uh, that um that uh, stadium uh, I think it's as Adams Park pretty sure anyway um, then we've got Luton against Cardiff now Luton come into this you know fairly decent form but obviously that the last game that they played was uh, not exactly ideal uh, against Birmingham because it was a tough game it was always going to be tight but eventually it fell Luton's way and they got the win um, thanks to the goal from Dan Potts, um, but I just feel this game could be a bit more of a, a dull one um, because ultimately Cardiff haven't been doing well at all. They've been sliding down the table um, and, you know, they are sitting in seventh, which is very, very good. Three wins in the row, but 
they're still a little bit behind the rest. So I think this will be a draw here. Uh, I'm going to go for Luton Town 1, Cardiff City 1. Okay, the next game to predict is going to be between... First of all, it is at home. Uh, wait, hang on. What's happened here then? All right, rewind, rewind. Hang on. Uh, yeah, Millwall. And then it's against the away team, Birmingham. Now, Birmingham obviously will be gutted about that Luton game. They didn't really test uh, the Luton goalie too much in that one. Just one shot on target. Um, and they are having a pretty poor season, uh, unfortunately, for Ita Karanka's team. I mean, when you look at their squad, they've got Scott Hogan. They've got... Uh, Djukovic, they've got Halinovic, but they're just not getting the games and uh, getting the results. And Neil Etheridge is probably a, quite a frustrated figure at the minute because he's a good goalie, but the defence isn't helping him out. And uh, now they go to um, the, ga get the game at Millwall, which is always tough. We know how uh, you know the Den can really get a lot out of teams and be quite exhausting. Millwall haven't had the best of seasons, that's clear to see, but that win against Reading will give them confidence, and Mason Bennett, um, the right man in the right place. So ultimately, I think that uh, Millwall will take confidence from that, but I just don't think that they'll be able to stop this Birmingham team uh, from uh, from getting a nil-nil. I think they're defensively going to be very desperate to, to not concede, and Millwall just haven't scored many goals this season. So I think this could be... A bit of a stinker, I'm afraid. Millwall nil, Birmingham nil. Okay, moving on. We have a slightly better game between Swansea City and Nor Nottingham Forest. Now, Nottingham Forest, fair play. I didn't expect them to get a point against Bournemouth. That was quite a good result. Uh, and generally, they haven't started to improve since they brought in Glenn Murray. Um, since Chris Hewton has kind of probably had a bit more faith in his players to just say, go on, just express yourselves. And they have been getting a few points here and there. Um, the, obviously, the win against Wickham was massive. Uh, and before that, you know, that game against Coventry, they kind of had to win. So they're not winning games that are, you know, unexpected, but they're ultimately getting the, the results they needed um, to just stop that bad run of form that was uh, happening earlier on in the season. So it's two wins on the spin now. Um, and then a draw uh, was stopping that those two wins against Bournemouth. But as I say, it's a very good point against the Cherries. So... I think uh, defensively, Nottingham Forest haven't been too bad, um, but they are up against an interesting team here um, that is, of course, Swansea, who have been one of the best teams all season. So I don't think they're going to get a clean sheet this time. I'm going to say Swansea City 3, Nottingham Forest 1. All right, the next game to do is between... Uh, it is... Yeah... Coventry against Norwich. Now, oh dear, uh, I do feel for Coventry here because <laughs> Norwich have been brilliant. I mean, their form has tailed off a little bit, but they obviously went back to uh, back to form uh, against Stoke and really Timu Puki uh, back in the goals. But at the same time, it's Coventry City. We know that they can cause upsets. It's just Norwich. If it was any other, you know, top team, maybe we'd see a Coventry re result here. But I just... I just think Norwich uh, surely won't let it slip, um, even though it is at Coventry, um, or technically it's at Birmingham Stadium. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go for Norwich. I'm going to say 2-0, comfortable stuff for the Canaries um, away from home. All right, the next game is QPR versus Brentford. Uh, interesting game. Obviously, it's a bit of a London derby, this one. Uh, and it's on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Now, it sees the team that is currently sitting... Uh, in a very comfortable position of second, up against the team that is currently 17th. So there's a bit of a golfing class between the two teams. I mean, QPR, they are, are still a decent squad, you know. They they should be getting more out of that team. Um, and I suppose the sale of um, Eberich Eze wasn't ideal, but, you know, Eze's not been amazing for Palace this season. He's, he's got a, a couple of good wonder goals, but other than that, you know, he's not really filled the, the void of Zaha. So in that respect, maybe QPR haven't missed out too much. But they're still struggling and they're still not getting as many as many games, uh, you know, in their favour. So it's a it's still a problem for QPR. And uh, their game was obviously postponed with Rotherham. So, you know, they, they've got a rest going into this one. Um, but with QPR, I just feel like they're 
sometimes too reliant on on some of their certain players like Bright Say Samwell uh and there's a few others like I think there's um Charlie Austin as well unless he had come in if he hadn't have come in in the window maybe they would have been a lot lo lower down in the table but ultimately you've just got to back Brentford and they've been a brilliant team to watch this season Ivan Tony obviously been absolutely goal machine. Uh, it wasn't a goal machine, unfortunately, for them uh, on uh, on the, the game against Barnsley on Sunday. Bit of a surprise result that um, to, to see a Brentford loss, but I think they'll just dust themselves down and uh, and respond really. So yeah, I think Brentford will be more clinical, and it will be Brentford three QPR nil, um, and most likely uh, another goal for Ivan Tony. But it is away from home. So they've got at least that to deal with. But yeah, nil three in my opinion. Okay, we've got two more games to go. Barnsley against Blackburn is the next one. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like this is a bit of a local derby. Am I right? Because I think Barnsley is fairly close to Burnley. And we all know that Burnley are massively hated by Blackburn. So maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, it's going to be at 7.45 on Wednesday. And Blackburn are coming off the back of... A few disappointing results, uh, it's got to be said. Against Preston, they wouldn't wouldn't have expected to lose. Preston were in a terrible run of form. Um, and, you know, against QPR, they really should have they should have won that game. So they just need to respond. And I'm sure Tony Mowbray will try and rally the lads. But the game against Barnsley is never easy. We know they've got the likes of Corley Woodrow uh, and Connor Chaplin. So they, they're threatening and... They are actually quite close to Blackburn in the table. Just four positions separate them. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. But I'm going to go for a Blackburn win. I think they will respond, um, even if it might be nervy. Uh, so, Barnsley nil, Blackburn one. And the man that gets the only goal of the game for Blackburn, let's say it will be the man that scored the only goal of the game against Luton. It is, of course, Adam Armstrong. And we finally wrap up these predictions with a game that is between Bournemouth and Rotherham. It's on Sky Sports. Make sure you watch it. And this is a tough game for Rotherham. But ultimately, Bournemouth haven't been their usual selves in the last 10 or so games. They've dropped off. That's why they're sitting in sixth, not in the top two as they were early in the season. Um, and they did get that point against uh, against Forest. But ultimately, they need to be getting more wins. Um in their last five, three defeats is not promotion form uh, and they could slip out if they start losing more games and Cardiff keep on winning them. But ultimately, I think this is a game that they should be comfortable. Rotherham haven't been the most attractive team to watch this season, but you know they defensively are quite uh, resilient and you know they get the odd clean sheet. Let's see what happens, but I'm just going to favour Bournemouth here. Uh, I'm going to say... 2-1 to the Cherries um, at Vitality Stadium. And that wraps up my predictions. But let's get into my fantasy team for this week. Now, it's a juicy one. It's got to be said. My team is looking lovely. So, basically, what I've got to tell you is I scored 41 last week. And now we've got a chance for another point from another player. And that is Richard Wood. Now, I've had him for pretty much all the season. He's not got many points, it's got to be said. He's got a lot of yellow cards, all right? Just allow it. But he has got a bit of threat in the box. He faces a Bournemouth team that is a little bit off their usual selves and he can score goals. We saw that against Preston earlier on in the season from Richard Wood. And ultimately, there's a link there with Bournemouth and Preston. You know, Ben Pearson used to play for Preston, now plays for Bournemouth. You never know. You never know if there's a Richard Wood goal. Um, but I have taken, anyway, a minus four hit this week in terms of my transfers because I've had a few doubts about players and it just had to be done. Unfortunate Red Arrow sees me to an overall rank of 991. 2.4k uh, game week rank, not exactly good at all. 1711 overall points. But this week is going to be different, I'm telling you now. So, in goal, we've got Freddie Woodman. What an absolute legend. He's been keeping clean sheets for me all season. Then defence is a bit, you know, we've mixed it up a little bit. So we brought in Pippa last week. He got us an assist off the bench 
just because that Swansea game is called off. Lucky, but we'll take it. And he got a yellow card, which is a bit frustrating, but still, three points. Could be worse. Uh, and he plays this week against Middlesbrough, who struggled to score goals. Then we've got Max Arendt against Coventry. Surely that's a clean sheet. You'd, hope, you'd think so. Um, then we've got Richard Wood against Bournemouth. Come on, you never know. Then in the midfield, we've got Brian Mbemu, who didn't actually do anything uh, in the game against Barnsley, um, which is a bit of a shame, and also got subbed off. So hopefully he's all right to, to do well in this QPR game. Then we've brought in Nick Powell. We had him earlier on in the season, then we had to get him out because of an injury or like something about there's not enough games for him. But we're back in with Nick Powell, and he's facing Sheffield Wednesday. Surely there's a chance of a goal there. Um, I've only said uh, one goal for Stoke, but hopefully that one is through Nick Powell. And then we've also done uh, another transfer, which is Daniel Backman as part of the minus four. So I got rid of uh, the frustrating Semenyo ever since I brought him in. He's done nothing, so he had to go for Nick Powell. But then I thought, hang on, a few weeks this season, I have had the problem of when Freddie Woodman's games got called off, as we've seen with a few teams this season, uh, frozen pitches and COVID. I've not had any points for my for my backup goalie because my backup goalie was um, that lad from uh, I think it was from Nottingham Forest or something. He was called Smith, so he's always been getting me zero points. So actually, why not bring in Daniel Backman, who might come out of the team soon? I'll admit it's not ideal because I've kind of jumped on the on the bandwagon a little bit late um but you know you never know if if freddie woodman you know doesn't play one week and backman is playing ahead of foster for whatever reason he can come in so yeah uh we've got him for the bench uh this week but in terms of our midfield just to finish off we've got jamal Lowe and then ken semmer and then our front three is the general normal front three the one we know we've come to know and has got me so many points over this season Vice captain, we've gone with Ivan Tony. The reason I'm not captaining him because Brentford just lost. So they'll take a while to get back into the, th the the swing of things, and you know they're playing QPR, who did just beat um, uh, who was it Blackburn the other day. So they could get an upset. You never know. So I'm not resting my laurels on Tony this week, but he's still in my team. So you know, then emergency captain is going to be Andre Ayew. Now he just had a game called off, so he's got a rest. But will he be completely? 100% uh, ready for this game. Who knows? So that's why I'm not captaining him. But my captain this week is bold. It's putting all my eggs in the Watford basket. But I'm going to captain Joao Pedro. All right. He's playing Preston. Hopefully he scores the winner. And I just pray that it will happen. All right. In the 84th minute, he's going to score. But hopefully he can score more than one uh, to get my captaincy uh, points. So that's what we're going to go with. And then on my bench, I've obviously got Backman. Elise, who's just not been doing anything, but we'll bench him this week, see what happens later. We've got Christie on the bench, mainly because he's been getting points, but he's playing Swansea this week. There's no chance. I'm telling you, there's no chance for a clean sheet there. Despite the fact he got it against Bournemouth, Swansea are lethal. And I've got two Swansea players in my team, so it would seem a bit um it would seem a bit illogical to, to have Christie playing. And then third on my bench, we've got Sean Morrison. Uh or is it Sean or just Morrison from Cardiff? Uh, playing Luton, he's not getting many points for me, and I'd rather play uh, Pippa, to be honest, and uh, Richard Wood. So that wraps up my fantasy preview of Game Week 30 and my championship predictions of Game Week 30. So thanks for watching this one. Uh, don't forget, the theme of the week is Pancake Day, and let's see some good points for my team and see some good points for the Golden Boys. Let's beat Preston. Come on, you Orms.